Hello everyone. Uh, I got a comment asking a question. So awesome. Um, Autumn Yar wanted some more information. Um, tips and tricks for teaching little ones uh, in Korea. So I made a top five list, kind of like my last video. Um, and this is like my top five little pieces of advice for people that are teaching small children in Korea. Um, because it's great. So, uh, number one, what, the first thing that I would recommend doing is develop a routine. From day one, be open to changing it and to modifying it as you need, but come up with a routine. Don't just come in and start off teaching right away. Um, come in and, you know, my kids, what we do is the first thing I ask is, what's the day today? And they usually have to guess because they're little tiny people, um, but they figure out what day it is, and then I write it on the board, and then we talk about what month is it, and we do that, and then who is the helper today, and they get to look and see who the helper is, and then it's going to depend on the level of your kids. My first class in the day are a high enough level so that um, they... Uh, like they can tell me what they did the day before and so I'll be like what did you do after school yesterday and they ask me those things and if I'm using my little sing-song voice that's also something you will develop um, I know some teachers that don't really talk like that but most of the teachers at my school end up talking like that because it, the kids if you sound like a char cartoon character the kids listen to you more on that later but um, yeah uh, the kids that don't don't have enough English to talk about things like that normally. Um, I'll play a flashcard game with them first or do some, you know, for my more active troublemaking class, you know, we do some activity to calm everything down, maybe sing a song. Um, but yeah, so uh, that leads into number two. Singing is magic. If you sing something, it's just, ah, uh, they tend to pay attention. I mean, it makes sense from a brain study. We know that kids learn and work better with songs. That's why Magic, or uh, not Magic School, but Schoolhouse Rock is so awesome. But there is something in this country with the little kids. Um, and I'm going to teach you a trick right now. Are you ready? You go, ba 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 And you do that with little kids, little kindergartners, and all of a sudden, all of them will go, Phew. I don't know what it's from. I don't know where it comes from or why it works, but that's literally, um, I've seen so many Korean teachers doing it, and I tried it the other day just to see if it was, you know, Korean magic or if I could do it too. It works. It works. So, um, yeah, if it ever gets out of control, you can do that. You don't even have to be really loud. Usually if they hear it, they just automatically pew. So, yeah. Um, number three, happy teacher is better than angry teacher, but angry can be good too. So, um, I have a class that's awesome, I don't have to yell at them that often, and it's great, we all get along, and it's so that, you know, I'm happy all the time, so when I, when they mess up, or if they're misbehaving, if I need to get angry, I can, ah, why are you being bad, and that's awesome, but I have another class where they are not well behaved, they are not motivated to do well, and I have to be the mean teacher. And that's okay, too, because what I've found is that they still love me. And when I walk by them in the halls, it, they're not high schoolers. You know, they're not going, oh, I hate that teacher. They're still going, Cassandra teacher, hello, Cassandra teacher. You know, I mean, they're still going to love you. They're still going to, you know, wave to you in the hall, and they're going to want to hug you and, and, and everything. And if anything, you know, angry teacher can make them, you know, want to do better because they want to make the teacher happy. They don't understand why teacher is angry. What can we do to make teacher happy? Um, just don't go overboard on it, you know. Make sure that you give them that shred of hope that they can reach for. Uh, number four, if you are teaching in a hog one, I don't know what your teaching situation is or what, but if you are teaching in a private school where the parents are paying tuition, there's a big thing you have to remember. The parents are gods. Um, aim to please them. Uh, think about, you know, ritual sacrifices and things like that, because literally, um, if, if the parents are not happy, then it, it makes no matter whether or not the kid, you think the kid is doing great, because um, it's not public school, they can pull them out at any time, if they don't like what you're doing or how their kid's doing, they can pull them out and put them in another school, and at least at my school, you know, when that happens, it's not that big of a bad reflection on the, on the native teacher, you know, on the, on the English teacher, it's usually the Korean teacher that takes the heat, 
But if it happens enough, it could be a problem. Um, don't stress over it, but think of things like, you know, if your co-teacher mentions that this parent is upset about the writing of their student, their student isn't writing as well, you know, their, their letters aren't nice. Well, in my mind, you know, well, I'm not so concerned about the writing. I want them to be speaking better because his pronunciation is bad. Parent trumps all. If the parent wants the kid to write better, you practice the writing. Don't worry about the pronunciation. Don't worry about the fact that he can't spell. Worry about how his letters look, because if it looks pretty, then the parent will be happy. Um, it's messed up. It's backwards. It goes against what they teach you at, at any education um, program. But it's private school. The parents are paying for a product. If we can't deliver, then it's not going to work. Um, number five, last one biggest, most important one of all is don't get overwhelmed. Um, sometime in your first couple of months, maybe even your first couple of weeks, it's going to get really overwhelming because when you first start, especially at a Hogwan, um, depending on what kind of program you're doing and how many classes you're teaching and how many levels you're teaching, it will get scary. Um, because of our school, the way we work, we have like five or six different programs. Each of those has their own textbook and way of that the classes work and things that you're doing and how the curriculum is supposed to work and it can get really overwhelming that accompany with the fact that you know they're little kids they're highly breakable they're highly impressionable there's a lot more stress with coming that comes with teaching the little little kindergartners than with the middle schoolers the middle schoolers you say something off meh, you know whatever the middle schoolers you know and especially the type of yeah it's just Kindergarten is stressful, so be aware. Don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Ask for help. You know, um, if not at your school, then you know with someone else that's been teaching because uh, it can get overwhelming. So I wish you the best of luck in your teaching, and uh, let me know how it's going. All right, and I'm gonna go because speaking of teaching, I have to go do that now. So see you later.